Hi, today I'm going to talk about why M calibration is using an alternative prony series definition as part of the material calibration. And the idea here is really when you define a prony series, that controls the relaxation response of the material. So here's a figure on the right that shows stress strain data in red, experimental data, and then blue is a prediction from a prony series. And traditionally, the prony series are given by the G values, which is the shear relaxation terms, the K values, which is the volumetric relaxation terms, and tau values, which are characteristic times. And uh, if you look to the left here, this is a screenshot from M calibration. You see that there are additional parameters, some G, some K, and they're also the G values are called rel G and the K values are rel K. So there is a difference here and people get confused about why is it doing something different? Why doesn't M calibration simply use the traditional prony series as defined? And the problem is as follows. Really what we are trying to do here is to calibrate the material model. And uh, to do that, we need to search the minimum of the difference between the experimental data and the predictions from this prony series viscoelastic model. So we need to minimize this function f of something, and uh, the variable that we want to optimize is the GI values. But the, the relaxation terms are not independent and free. So first, of course, the, they need to be between 0 and 1. Each of these curves, uh, G values, need to be between 0 and 1. But also, the sum of the G values have to be between 0 and 1. The sum cannot be larger than 1 in the finite element program. And that causes a problem when you do uh, a calibration. This, this additional summation constraint complicates things. So, so let's take a look at the example at the bottom here. If G1 is 0.51, G2 is 0.4, and G3 is 0.088, then the sum of the G values become almost 1, 0.998. And I often see this in experimental data. You end up with a sum of the G values that is very close to 1. And if you want to then search for G1 and G2R, you can't just increase, the algorithm can't just increase G1, for example, because that may bring the sum over 1. So in order to do that, it needs to reduce G2 at the same time as it's increasing G1 to, to do the optimization. And that inequality makes it difficult to perform this numerically. So there's a, a better way to do it. And how do we do this? Well, the answer, or at least one answer that I think is very convenient is to perform a variable substitution. So we don't actually, in M calibration, or use the prony series as defined. We come up with a different set of parameters that remove these constraints on the G parameters and make it difficult to optimize this uh, equation. So we introduce GI hat values. So these are the rel G values. And then we have a G sum parameter. And then the actual prony parameters which are needed for the stress calculations are calculated from these variables that we have using this equation. So it, the g is equal to gi hat times g sum divided by the summation of the, all the g hat values. So as an example, if g1 hat is equal to do this, g2 hat this, and g3 hat this. These are the numbers from the previous page. The G sum then becomes 0 0.99, and, and we pick G sum equal to 0 0.998, then the G values will become exactly the same as the G hat values, because the sum of the G hat values are the same as the G sum. So that's easy, they become the same. Now, if we multiply each of these G hat values by 10, so we can 10 times larger, and we still say G sum is equal, equal to 0 0.998, we get the same GI values as in example two. And this is purposely the case. There is no limit on what the G hat values can be. And the only thing that matters is the relative size of them. And the actual magnitude of them is given by this final parameter. So this makes this much more convenient. Of course, with this definition, we now have a situation that we can't expect the parameters to be unique because there are many solutions here, like example one and example two, they give you the same prony parameters, even having different parameters within M calibration. That's not a problem. The key is that we want to simulate this and calculate this quickly, and we want the optimization to go fast. So that's why we do this variable substitution. And this approach also is used in M calibration for the PRF model in Abacus, which also has this constraint 
on some of the parameters that the sum of the parameters cannot exceed a one. So that's the uh, same, same approach is used there and that makes the calibration quicker and more accurate and that's why we do it. So if you have any questions on this, you can ask them below.